okay so fifth grade this this is the day six and these videos have rolled out a little bit later but we've had most of the fifth grade has been online so we've we've been able to go through these um, and that's been great but I want to make sure that these are out there in case anybody because this is fractions and it's so so important so if you have not been through please take the time to go through these lessons get that solid background on fractions because it's just going to be critical um, going forward so this one is using a benchmark fraction okay and day five let's go back and look I think day five was also adding and subtracting and day five here look was also using benchmarks okay so if you just watch day five you know a benchmark is something that you know like you know you know what like one half is or one quarter or three quarters or actually let me put these in kind of their order increasing order you, you know what a quarter of something looks like you know kind of a quarter you're like oh okay I know what a quarter looks like you know there's a quarter or I've got something pizza that's divided into four parts you know there's a quarter one-fourth uh, you know what one half looks like you know what one half of a pizza looks like and you also know like three-fourths with three-fourths of a pizza and one whole so these are things that you don't really have to think about. It's like they're like it's like two times two. You just like oh yeah I know that. And that's what they mean by benchmark. Something that you know, and then you can compare things to, and that way it helps you to compare fractions. Okay, so let's take a look. So here you have David grew one and three quarters inches last year, one and five eighths inches this year. Estimate how much he grew in two years. Okay. Excuse me. So if we're going to estimate, that means we're going to do a little guessing. Well, one and three quarters. So think about that. One and three fourths. Okay. So one and three fourths. You know, where would that be on a number line or on a pizza? So if you had a number line like they have down here, you got put the holes in one and two holes, right? Three fourths means it's divided into four sections. So if I divide each of these holes, parts into four, then I have one would be like one is to here and three fourths, one, two, three. There's three, one and three fourths. So the point is, it's pretty close to two. So it's about two if you're going to estimate. Okay. Let's look at one and five eighths. So one and five eighths, and we were talked about this one in lesson five. Well, if you have eight parts, so half of that. Half of eight would be four, so four eighths is one half. So one and four eighths is one and one half. Okay. So you automatically know you have you have one and three fourths is almost two. One and five eighths is pretty close to. We'll say it's about one and one half. So if you're going to put those together. one and three fourths that's what he grew the first year right remember that one and three fourths last year plus one and five eighths you could find a common denominator and then add those and then find exactly how much he grew but it does say estimate so if we get to estimate then we can say okay well one and three quarters is just about two one and five eighths is about one and one half Whoops. And I can't draw in the gray, so I gotta scrunch this in. So altogether he grew about eh, about three and one half inches. Okay? Alright? So that's our that's our estimate. So let's take a look at this. Uh, they they came up with they did a little more work. So they said the sum is a little bit more. And you can read this, that this is perfectly fine. There's just a lot of verbiage there, but basically they said, they, they said, well, the sum is a little more than three and a quarter. So they said, David grew a little more than three and a quarter. Okay. We said he grew three and a half. It's an estimate. I think we're, we're plenty close, plenty close. Okay. Let's go take a look at number one. Okay. Look at the example problem. Um, Explain how you know one and five eighths is a little greater than one and one half. Oh well, we can, that's easy. We got that. So basically, 
Let's look at 1 and 5 eighths. Okay. Well, if we have eight parts in a pizza, what would half of that pizza look like? How many slices would we have to have to get half? That'd be four. So one and four eighths is equal to one half. We actually have one and five eighths. We have one more slice, one more part than a half, right? So a little bit more than one half. And I would say to answer that question here, you could simply say, you could simply say, well, one, um, one and four eighths is one and a half. So one and five eighths is a little more. Love how they give you a lot of space here. It's a little more than one and one half, okay? All right, let's take a look at the next one here. Let's go red. All right, find the actual sum. What's the actual sum this time of one and three fourths plus one and five eighths? So I'm gonna erase this part here so we can get back to that. So we have one and three fourths plus one and five eighths. And we need a common denominator. If these are two pizzas, they're not the same size slices. So we're going to do our, we're going to skip count by the multiples. And then we'll make an equivalent fraction. We'll just rewrite it so it's an equivalent fraction. So let's skip count. We got 4, 8, 12. Skip count by 8. 8, and you're like, oh, you don't even really need to go any further because look. This is the one that if I can cut, I can easily cut the one and three fourths pizza into eight parts. Okay, I can cut that pizza into eight parts. So remember, I have three fourths, so I could I could draw it out like this. I could draw out three fourths, color in three fourths. There's three fourths. You don't have to do this, I just want to show you probably remember this already and I could say okay I'll cut it into eight parts there it is eight parts so now I have a fraction instead of three-fourths I have a fraction that is six-eighths or we can do it with multiplication so let's go do it with multiplication um, let's come down here and we'll say three-fourths now instead of cutting it I'm going to use multiplication do I double the number of pieces triple them you can see if I double the total number of pieces in that pizza I got eight and I also double the number of pieces I have. Again, I double the number of pieces, but the slices are smaller. All you gotta do is come back and look over here. Six eighths is eating the same amount of pizza as three fourths, just have smaller pieces, right? But what it does do is now it lets us add this up super easy. So let's do that. Super easy to add it up. Now, instead of one and three fourths, I can say that is 1 and 6 eighths, right? Because over here I said, look, 3 fourths is the same as 6 eighths. So 1 and 6 eighths plus 1 and 5 eighths. Let's add up our whole pizzas. I have 2 and 11 eighths. So now let's talk about what does 11 eighths mean. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this part here, okay? So we have space to look at this. What does 11 eighths mean? Well, let's just go back. Let's think about it. What does that denominator mean? It means I have a pizza that has eight parts to make a whole. That's what the denominator. Just go back. Think about what it means, eight parts to make a whole. There's eight parts. And I have 11 parts. All right. So let's shade them in. One two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we were just in the process. Just had to take a phone call there. So we got 11 eighths, so we got one. We did two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoa, I only have eight, I only have eight. I need 11. So in other words, I must have more than one. And that's what I have is more than one. 
So now I gotta make another pizza with eight parts and fill in nine, 10, 11. So that all together now, all together, okay, hold on. That's one and three eights, right? Or 11 eights, okay? So in other words, this equals um, um, 11 eighths equals 1 and 3 eighths. I already have two holes, don't I? I have two holes. So I got to put 2 and 1 and 3 eighths together. That means total is 3 and 3 eighths. Ta da! I'm going to erase this so I can write on it, okay? 3 and 3 eighths. Okay, so hold on here. Let's see what we got. Oh, explain how you. Okay. Find the actual sum to determine how much David grew in two years. Okay, so we'll say actual sum. Is three and three eighths. And then we say this is reasonable. In other words, whenever you do, you know, something in math, you want to make sure you don't get a wacky answer. Like if this was like 4,000 and 3 eighths, we'd be like, whoa, he did not grow 4,000 inches. It's reasonable because when we did our estimate earlier, okay, when we did our estimate way back up here, we said, hey, hey, he's pretty close to about three and a half. We said he grew about, about three and a half. So now we added the actual numbers. Well, our actual is three and three eighths, which is very close to three and a half, right? If we it, three and four eighths would be three and a half. So this is reasonable because it is close to yeah. Go ahead. It's close to our estimate of three and one half. There you go. We got it. Okay, let's take the next one here. Irene makes four and two-thirds cups of pancake batter. She splits the batter into two bowls. She splits the batter into two bowls. She makes four and two-thirds cups of batter. She splits it into two bowls. She mixes blueberries into two and one-quarter cups and walnuts into the rest. Okay. How much of the batter has walnuts in it? So how much has walnuts? Explain your estimate. Oh, estimate how much has walnuts. Okay, even better. When you see estimate, then we can we can round these things. Okay, so we have four and two thirds cups. Let's draw a picture of this. Four and two thirds, right? And this is the uh, pancake batter. We'll just say B for batter. And it splits it into two. So let's just split it. Do exactly what it says. Two bowls. We got two bowls. And then, so here's our bowl number one, bowl number two. She puts blueberries in two and one quarter. So two and one quarter. This gets B for blueberries. Over here is the W for walnuts. How much goes in there? And it says estimate how much goes in the walnuts. No problem. Estimate, estimate. So let's use our benchmark. So um, four and two thirds. Okay, let's think about this. So is that close to um, like a quarter, a half, three quarters, one whole? And the, and the best benchmarks are like one half and one whole. They're easy to work with. They're pretty easy. So four and two thirds. Well, that's that's kind of a it's kind of a tricky one because look, if you look at two thirds, We can decide, we'll decide what we want to do. There's what two thirds looks like. So if we were to make one exactly half of that would be like, you know, maybe, maybe like this. So I would say it's pretty close to four and a half. Don't you think? It's pretty close to four and a half. So we'll say four and two thirds, pretty close to four and one half, okay? And then you have two and two and one fourth, two and one fourth. You know, actually, we can just use that. We could probably just use that, like as it is. So let's go up here. 
and I'll erase this where it says batter, and we'll put our estimate up here. We'll say this is about four and one half. And two and one fourth, that's already kind of a good benchmark, okay? Because watch this. How can we make two and one half? How can we make one half with four as a denominator? We can we kind of already know how to do that. We could do that already because and it's not that big of a deal. Because um one half, okay. If I have four in my denominator, how many parts would I need? Four slices of pizza, how many parts would I need to make it exactly a half? Okay, that'd be like two slices, right? So four and a half, we could just change this to two fourths. Okay. And now we can figure this out. We can say, oh, okay, we have a total of four and one half. I'll show it down here. Our estimate, remember our estimate's four and a half. Four and one half. Oops, sorry. Four and we said two fourths. So it's easier to work with. And if we take away this part, two and one fourth, we'll have what's in the walnuts. So four minus two, that's two cups. Two fourths minus one fourth, that's one fourth. So it's about two and one fourth. Okay. That's our estimate. And you know, and we could do that, we could have done that just like all in our heads. Pretty, pretty easy, okay. So how much of the batter is walnuts? So we will say two and one, I'll say about, because it's an estimate. About two and one quarter cups has walnuts. Um, I estimate, or I estimated, and then I'll just write what you did. We just estimated that four and two thirds is about four and one half. And then four and we'll just say what we did four and two fourths minus two and one fourth equals two and one fourth. That's a good enough explanation because it says about two and one fourth cups has walnuts. I estimated that two and two thirds is about four and one half. And then you could have even had another statement down here that says if we wanted that four and one half is equal to four and two fourths, we could have even done that, connected it, and then said four and two fourths minus two and one fourth. So we could have done all that. But that's pretty good right there. Okay, I gotta pause, get ready for a class. I'll come back and finish this video. Okay, so we're back here. Sorry about that, tilted it a little bit. So we're gonna keep going, we're making good progress, very good progress. And let's come in here with the blue. So find the exact amount of batter that has the walnuts in it, okay? And explain how you know your answer is reasonable. So this is the kind of question that's asking us to do two things. You've been doing this, um, you did this last year also. You're gonna, you're gonna find the exact answer. And then you're gonna say, is it reasonable? And you're going to do that by comparing that to your estimate. That's all you're going to do. So let's go back up and take a look. We're saying we estimate, we estimate that it's about two and one fourth. Okay, about two and one fourth. So when we find our, so so that's that's our estimate, and that's what you do in real life. Is you go out and you say like, ah, oh, you know, we're going to make some, we're going to make some pancakes, and so we're going to put about, you know, I poured about this much in blueberries, so. You know, I think I made about this many cups um, of batter with walnuts. And I say, say you're starting a business, okay? You just want to estimate, you know, for the day about what you did. And then you would go back and say, okay, now I really need to know exactly, exactly, you know, how much of that walnuts, you know, was in there. So you would find the exact amount like we're going to. And you'd say, okay, now after I find the exact, now, does that make sense? Did I do everything right? So I'm going to compare it to my estimate. So that's what we're going to do here. All right, so the exact amount is, we have four and two thirds. The exact amount would be four and two thirds minus two and one fourth. Minus two, oops, sorry about that, hold on. Minus two and one fourth. 
Okay, so this is the total batter, four and two thirds minus what was blueberries, two and one fourth. Okay, so we're gonna exactly find this. And first thing we notice is, well, we can't do anything because we have different denominators. We've been talking about that. So let's do what we've been talking about doing as well. Let's skip count. So we'll do our skip count and then we'll write an equivalent fraction so they both have the same, oops, um, oops. So they both have both have the same denominator, our equivalent fraction. We'll write that. So we're going to do a little skip counting here and see where what this uh, what is our our common denominator. And you'll start to get really good at this. So we'll go by threes: three, six, nine, twelve. And then we'll count skip count by fours. And 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 what we're doing is we're saying, hey, I got a pizza that is cut into four parts. If I double that. I get 8. If I cut it again, I get 12. And then we're like, oh, so this pizza, if it was a pizza, I could do in 12 parts. And then the pizza that has three slices to make a whole, I could do in 12 parts. Voila. And I could draw the pizzas out like we've done and, and, and figure exactly what it is. I mean, I could draw two thirds. You know, I could come over and say, well, what is that? Two thirds. And I could go like this. And shade in two thirds like this. Get my pizza cutter out and say, now I got to make this. I'm going to make 12 slices. So in order to do that, I would just make four parts on this side like this. So see, that's now has one, two, three, four, eight, 12 slices, and then I have one, two, three, four, eight shaded in. So I could I could do it that way, and I could rewrite four and two thirds. That'd be 4 and 8 twelfths. Or, instead of doing that, I could just use multiplication, which is my mathematical pizza cutter. So let's do that. Let's use our mathematical pizza cutter here. So I'm going to come over and I'll say, okay, 2 thirds. I am going to magically change that into a pizza with 12 parts. That means I have to quadruple the number of parts. And I quadruple the number of slices that I have. It gives me 8 twelfths. And I'll do the same thing for one fourth. So I have one fourth. And oh, let me move it down a little bit. So I have one fourth. And I will magically make that into a pizza with 12 parts. So I will uh, triple the number of slices that I have. That'll give me 12 slices. And also, this one slice I have, I'm going to cut that into three smaller pieces. And again, we are um, we're making more. There's more slices, certainly, but they are smaller, and that's why it's equivalent. You know, it's one big slice, one big slice here, one fourth is equivalent to these three smaller ones. Okay. So now I get to go back. Okay. So now I get to go back. So I'm going to take this and rewrite this. I'm going to move this over here. So instead of four and two thirds, of course, this was just a mark that got stuck in there. Instead of four and two thirds, I have two thirds is the same as eight twelfths. I have four and eight twelfths. Minus, instead of two and one fourth, I have two and three twelfths. And now I subtract my four holes minus two holes two holes. Eight twelfths minus three twelfths, five twelfths. Let me go close the window. I can, maybe you guys can hear the background. So now my answer, my solution is two and five twelfths. Okay. And it says, explain how you know your answer is reasonable. So let's compare it. This is my exact answer. This is the exact. And then down here was my estimate. This is my estimate up here, my estimate. E S T. Okay. So two and one fourth, two and five twelfths. So how close is that? Well, I'll show you. Let's take one fourth. Oh, well, we already know. Look over here. Here's here's two and one fourth. So one fourth. One fourth. Or actually, I should do it right here. 
I'll highlight it a different color here. Yellow green. One fourth is equivalent to what we find. Three twelfths. So my estimate, I could write, I could say that my estimate, you don't have to do all this, but you can just know it. My estimate is two, really, I could say it's three twelfths. And my exact answer, my exact answer is two and five twelfths. Well, gosh, that's really close. That's two twelfths difference, right? So, and twelfths are pretty small. So how do we put that in writing? Well, that's anytime you do your math writing, just write exactly what you did. Don't don't make it a big deal. First of all, they say what's the um, um, two twelfths? We can say it has walnuts. So we'll answer the question: the actual amount of batter two twelfths has walnuts. I'll say this is reasonable. And this is all we got to say. This works with all these kind of questions. This is reasonable because um, my estimate of two and one fourth is very close to my exact answer. To my exact answer. That's all you got to know. Okay, and so think about it. That's all. We just wrote what we did. Uh, the solution, 2 and 5 twelfths has walnuts. We answered that part. Find the exact amount. Explain how you know your answer is reasonable. Because my estimate of 2 and 1, two and one fourth is very close to my exact answer. If you wanted to write more, you could say 2 and 1 fourth or 2 and 3 twelfths, right? You could actually say 2 and 1 fourth or two and three twelfths, because they're equivalent, it's very close to my exact answer. But I think that's perfectly fine. Just what we wrote the first time is good enough. And as long as you're understanding equivalent fractions and getting common denominators, you're jamming. You're jamming. Okay. Here we go. Last one. Irene makes a second batch of three, a second batch of three and one-fourth cups of pancake batter. She wants to know how much more, how much more batter she made in the first batch. Okay. She estimates that the difference between the sizes of the two batches of four and two thirds minus three and one fourth. She thinks it's two and one twelfth. She estimates this. Okay. Explain why this estimate is not reasonable. Okay. So she messed up. So Irene did not do a good job in her estimation. So. So let's take a look here and see. So really, she estimates the difference between them. 4 and 2 thirds minus 3 and 1 fourth is 2 and 1 twelfth. Okay, that's her estimate. So why is that different? Well, let's come up here and we'll let's do our own estimate. So 4 and 2 thirds. We already said earlier. So look, you can go back. When you're taking a test, just go back and look. Like we've already did this one. Watch, 4 and 2 thirds. We said that was about, look. Four and two fourths. So let's do it again. Four and two thirds is about. We already did this work. Why do it again? Remember how we did that one? We started off by saying that four and two thirds was about um, four and one half. Remember that? And then we said, hey, we can write one half. We can we can write that with four in the denominator because if I have a pizza with four parts, if I take half of those, that'd be two. So that's got to be one. That's equal to one half. So that's how we got that. Okay. And so look, that's easy. Now we got, we got, so here we go. Four. So let's do our estimate. Our estimate is, we estimate, because we are definitely smarter than Irene here. It looks like four and two fourths minus three and one fourth, right? Because that's what they're saying here is one and one-fourth. Okay, we think it's about one and one-fourth. Okay, so Irene says two, so she's actually, she's way off. Okay, so let's put um, her estimate Her 
estimate, let's say her estimate is not reasonable. One way to answer is say because um, my estimate shows it to be one and one fourth. Okay, that that would be one way that we could do it. Um, the other way you could do it is you could say you could find the exact you could find the exact answer. Um, and so let's do that too, just for fun. Okay, we'll find the exact. And so what's going to happen is her, I was just looking for a shorter way to do it, but let's do the exact answer for fun. Okay, here's the exact. We have four and two thirds minus three and one fourth. So we don't have to go back and do a lot of stuff because look, we already know from this problem up here, number four, our common denominator is 12 and we know how to make it. Remember we did all that work. In fact, we already know four and two thirds. We already got that. See how it's four and eight twelfths. Remember we did this over, um, we have two thirds and we turned it into eight twelfths. So I don't know if you remember, but right, right here, we did all of that stuff. And then right there, there's four and eight twelfths. So we already got that one done. So we have four and eight twelfths minus, and we also did one fourth. One fourth is the same as three twelfths. So look, we can easily do this one. This is simple, Simon, right? So that's three and three twelfths. Remember, I'm getting that from the work that we did in number four. Hopefully you saw that yellow highlight, but I already know that two thirds, I already know that two thirds equals eight twelfths, because that's times four times four, okay? And I know that one fourth, remember that was times three, that's equal to three twelfths. Okay, that's where these numbers are coming from. Okay, let me get that out of there. So hopefully that makes some sense there. Okay, now let's do it. 4 minus 3 is 1, and 8 minus 3 is 5 twelfths. So you could also, you could also add, also, the exact answer. is 1 and 5 twelfths. Okay, and so her estimate is not close. And then that'd be the last thing, you know, her estimate is not close enough. I mean, the, remember the estimate is not going to be the same. It's going to be, it's not going to be exactly the answer, but her estimate is not close enough to be reasonable. Reasonable means just it just doesn't make sense. Look, you only have, you know, she only made one and you know, one and one fourth, one and five twelfths. You know, less than one and a half. And Irene says, oh, it's two and a twelfth, right? So it's just too much. It's too much, Irene. Okay, that does it. That does it for number six. Way to go. Way to hang in.